My friends built me another prison and challenged me to break out of it, but this one seemed impossible. In the past, I beat this Ender Dragon prison, and I said the Ender Dragon was the strongest mob in the game. You guys let me know that wasn't right, so I'd like to introduce you to the Wither Prison. The Wither Prison looks scary on the outside, but on the inside it's even worse. Every single room is sealed with bedrock, meaning I can't break out of it by hand. I have to find my way to the exit and escape the prison, but am I going to be good enough to do that? I don't know, but we're going to find out because the escape starts now. Right off the bat, I started looking around. I was standing on a crafting table in some sort of bedrock tower. To my right was a hallway that I couldn't reach. Below me was nothing but a really big fall. After looking around for a little bit, I quickly found a piece of iron in an item frame on the side of the crafting table. That didn't really change much though, so I kept looking around. And after a few more seconds, I found another piece of iron in another item frame. After a bit more looking around, it seemed like this was all I was going to get, so I went to see what I could craft. I could make a weighted pressure plate, iron nuggets, or shears. I couldn't see how any of those would help me get into that room though, so I decided I must still be missing something, and I kept looking around for any other clues. After a while of staring at bedrock though, I gave up. All I was going to get was these two iron. I decided to make nuggets because if I needed to, I could reverse it, and when I did this, the chain recipe appeared. I actually didn't even know you could craft chains like this, but they did fix our problem. I just had to place the chain somewhere that I could jump on top of the chain and then use the chain to gain access to the room, and that's exactly what I did. So, using the chain, I was able to gain access to the next area. Right off the bat in the next area, the first thing I noticed was a furnace that had 5 iron inside of it. Other than that though, it was just a bedrock box with a big hole in the middle. I looked down in the middle to see what was down there. I could see the doorway to some sort of other area at the bottom, but other than that I didn't see much but a big fall. I continued to look around the room and I realized I missed something earlier. There was a rail hidden on top of the furnace. I hadn't noticed it because it was so thin. I picked up the rail and now I had a pretty good idea what to do with my 5 iron. I could get to the bottom of this hole without dying, but I had to go to the crafting table. I couldn't reach the crafting table from the ledge, so I was going to have to jump on top of the chain. Luckily though, I landed the jump. I went into the crafting table and crafted a minecart. Now I had everything I needed to survive the fall. First though, instead of making the jump again, I used the minecart and the rail just to teleport into the next room so I didn't slip and fall. I picked up the minecart and the rail. Now, a lot of you might be trying to guess how I'm going to use the minecart to cancel fall damage, and some of you might be thinking I'm just going to ride it down kind of like a boat. But actually, in Minecraft, that's not how minecarts work. See, if you ride off of a really tall height in a minecart, you'll actually take all the fall damage when you hit the ground and die. So that's not how I'm going to do it, but there is a way you can use them to cancel fall damage. I pushed the minecart down the hole on its own first, then I picked up the rail. And then I wanted to check one more time in this room and the room behind me to make sure I wasn't missing anything that I had to bring with me to the next area. Once I knew I was good, I was ready. I walked into the hole and canceled the fall damage by getting in the minecart at the last second, kind of like a boat MLG. I destroyed the minecart and looked above me to see if there was anything new I couldn't see before, but it was just bedrock. So I continued down the hallway. I was being careful to make sure I didn't miss anything. The first thing that caught my eye though was a piece of sand at the end of the hallway. I picked up the piece of sand and kept moving. I went up a flight of stairs and that's when I saw the real problem. There was a pit with lava at the bottom. The pit was so long that I couldn't jump over it. I tried to right click to see if there was any chest hidden in the lava but I couldn't find anything. I also thought maybe I could place the rail and minecart across but it was too far away for me to place the rail. So I was really confused. I did a little backtracking to see if I missed anything important behind me but after a short search I realized that there was nothing but bedrock. So I went back to the lava and had to try to figure out how I was going to get across. I quickly realized there was a way to get across, it was just something I didn't know how to do. I'd seen people online parkour with sand before, where if you time it just right while you're midair, you can place the sand and jump off of it before it starts falling, it's just not something I knew how to do. But I decided to change that. I recreated the jump in my own creative world, this allowed me to practice it as much as I wanted. At first, I was horrible, I could not land it to save my life, I kept missing and falling in the lava. But after a while, I was pretty consistent in creative mode, I would say I was landing it about half the time. And then I kept training for another 10 minutes and I even took the training wheels off, going into survival mode. But this didn't stop me, I kept landing the jump, I was getting pretty good honestly. So I felt like I was ready to try my luck at the real thing. I got ready and lined it up just like I did a hundred times before and went for the jump and luckily I landed it, I now had access to the next area. The first thing I saw in the new area really confused me. It was a pit of turtles all named subscribe. And what was really confusing is that 87% of you aren't subscribed to the channel. And I want to hit a million this year, so please do me a favor and subscribe. I also noticed they were getting rained on, meaning there was a hole at the top of this tower. I wasn't sure what to do with that information yet, but I was sure it was important. The next thing I noticed was a bunch of hoppers underneath these turtles, and eventually I opened one that had three copper ingots and a blaze powder inside of it. Other than that though, the rest of the hoppers were all empty. I wasn't sure what to do with this turtle area yet, so I decided to keep looking on the room and come back to it. The next thing I noticed in the room was a crafting table lodged in the wall, a sign that said power here pointed to an open block, and a hallway filled with lava that led to a room on the other side. 
There was also a furnace in the room, and inside the furnace was two gold ore. I also noticed while I was opening the furnace, there was an item frame below it. When I punched the item frame, I got the weirdest item I could think of, an oak sapling. So now I really wasn't sure what to do. I had to try to think. I figured my goal to create the power for that power source would probably be to make a gold pressure plate with those two gold ingots, but I had no way to smelt them, or at least that's what I thought at first. See, I did have the sapling, and that was 0.5 fuel. I could use that. I also realized that I could break the sign that said power here and use that, and that was one fuel, meaning I now had 1.5 total fuel, but to smelt both those ingots, I was going to need two fuel. So I had to find another 0.5 somewhere in this room, and that's where the real challenge of this room lied. I had to find a way with this inventory to get another thing I could smell, and I was really confused. I got my first hint when I went to the crafting table. I saw the only thing I could craft was a lightning rod. I heard it thunder earlier in the prison, so I knew I could summon lightning only where it was raining though. I didn't really understand how this was going to help me. That's until I went to the Minecraft Turtle Wiki and read the drops. They have the chance to drop three things, but the third's the most important. They drop a bowl if killed by lightning. So I crafted myself the lightning rod. I placed the lightning rod in the pit and then I got ready for the turtles to make their ultimate sacrifice, but I'm sure they wouldn't mind because they're doing it for the channel. Thanks boys. I said my final goodbyes to the subscribe turtles and then eventually they got struck by lightning. After they died, I started going through the hoppers one by one. The first one was empty and the second one had seagrass, but the fourth one had the bowl we needed. So now we had everything. We went back and collected the sign and went to the furnace. We started off by using the sinus fuel and then we added the bowl and finally we used the sapling. After all this, we were able to take the two gold ore and make gold ingots. Now we had everything we needed for the pressure plate, so we put it down and activated it. This activated a massive piston bridge that got rid of all the lava, giving us access to the room on the other side. Also, yes, I did destroy every single one of the hoppers, I just didn't show it because it took forever. After that, I went across the bridge to the room to see what there was. I was being careful because you could actually fall through the gap between pistons and I could have fallen down and died. When I got to the other side, I found a room with two ender pearls and a purple stair, and I knew what to do basically right away. At this point, I think I know every way you can face through bedrock with ender pearls. One of the remaining ways I haven't shown on this channel yet is you can actually use stairs. Basically, what you have to do is place down the stair and then ender pearl to the upper portion of it. This will make you stand on top of the stairs, placing your body in the bedrock, but I was not ready for what I was about to see. After I glitched through the ceiling, I was in a new room. This room had a bunch of bread and gear all over the walls, but it also had an end portal frame, missing only one eye, and I had everything I needed to craft the final eye. I went around and collected the gear and food. I turned off the effect that usually keeps my hunger full during these puzzles and made it so that I'd have to eat the bread to stay at full health. I got ready and geared up and put the final eye in the portal and jumped in. I started off underground, but luckily they left a pickaxe on the wall that I could use to dig myself out. I started digging myself out from underground and getting ready to fight the dragon. My friends might have found the one way to actually stop me from beating these puzzles. They know that I'm actually not that good at Minecraft. But I got to work. I started shooting down end crystals. I actually used to think you couldn't shoot these ones in the cages, but I saw in a video recently someone doing it and I was able to replicate it. After that, I just started lasering this dragon. I mean, this man must have thought I had aimbot. He was getting absolutely pinned down. I wasn't missing. And after a long fought battle where I ended up on three and a half hearts and completely out of bread, I landed the final blow on the dragon. I hope you guys liked this video. Subscribe if you did, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.